Deep in my heart, yeah. I knew things weren't right. Like I knew there were red flags. I wondered truly if I could even trust this person. I know for uh, me in that relationship, I think we both made an idol out of the other. That that's a very unhealthy place. Like we're not seeking God first and foremost. We're seeking what we want out of this relationship. What's up, sisterhood? I don't know if you have ever settled in a relationship or you know someone who has, but I'm guessing a lot of you feel that way because I posted this yes. to Instagram. I don't know if you can see it right there. It's a picture of me. I'm like, hello. <laughs> and I said, dear single sister, don't settle for a guy who isn't interested in honoring God with his life. No matter how cute or funny he is, it's not worth it in the end. Settling is never worth it. And then I went on to say a bunch of different stuff. And this post exploded mm -hmm. and so many of you commented so many of you shared it and so we were talking we we're like clearly this struck a chord and many of you are thinking about yeah. this or have been through this or you know someone who settled in a relationship and you're like that wasn't worth it why do we do this why do we convince ourselves that a relationship is okay when it's not or you might be thinking okay i don't want to settle what do i look for yes. how do i know if i'm settling or not so today we're going to talk about what it looks like to settle some red flags you can look for and just maybe how to encourage a friend or how to have wisdom for your whole mm -hmm. life to not get into that type of relationship or to get out of it if you are in that. Yes, I remember when I was in one, one of the biggest reasons I was settling is because I didn't want to go through the heartbreak of a breakup. So if that's you, I, I look back, I'm like, the short-term pain of a I breakup know. is so much better than the long-term pain of a bad relationship. Yeah. It is so much better. It feels like the pain will never end, but it does eventually with that breakup. In fact, we created a guide mm. to help you, a downloadable guide called the Christian Girls Breakup Survival Guide, because we know yeah. navigating your heart, your emotions, truth, next steps after a breakup can be really yeah. hard, and it can be a really lonely time. So we help you in this guide. If you're wondering how to get this for yourself, for a friend, this is actually one of the free downloadables that we gift to yeah. all of our supporters over on patreon.com slash girl defined. And if this is the first time you're hearing about it or you've heard about it, but you're like, maybe I will sign up and support girl defined. It's a platform where you can give a dollar or $2 per video that we make to help support this channel, to help us continue bringing free content like this yes. to you. It's a small investment from each girl and all together collectively, you help us fund this channel. It's amazing. Yeah. And as our way of saying thank you, every month we create free downloadables like this. You will get all of these it's the crazy. day you sign up, plus every new one we create moving forward. Five strategies for thriving as a single girl. There's okay, so, so you ones. walk through a breakup in a biblical way, then you learn how to thrive as a single girl. A free downloadable. Battling sexual temptation. That's so just another ones. one. 50 questions to deepen your friendships. I know they're like all flying. Um, 136 questions to ask in a relationship. This is actually one everyone gets access to. We're going to share the link at the end oh for how you can get this for free to help you in your relationship. But please, if you love Girl Define, if you're grateful for biblical content like this on the internet, please consider supporting us over at patreon.com slash girl define. And we can't wait to get all of these resources into your hands. Okay. So the reason that I wrote this post about not settling is because I mean, both Kristen and I, but I remember I had walked through a relationship before Dave, um, where deep in my heart, yeah. I knew things weren't right. Like I knew there were red flags. I knew, I mean, I, I wondered truly if I could even trust this person because there were just so many inconsistencies with what he would tell me, but then what he would do and things I would find out. Like he would say he was one place and I would find out later he never even went to that place. Like, why do you tell me that? You know, like, why are you lying to me? Things like that where you're embarrassed to tell people. Like, I didn't want to tell people like, oh, yeah, you know, he lies. <laughs> and especially because a lot of people, even in the church, were saying, wow, he's such a godly yeah. guy. I highly recommend him. And so you were hearing this from a lot of people. Yeah. But then what you were experiencing in the relationship was really different character-wise yeah. than what people were telling you. So that was a big issue. I mean, I think a lot of us... Um, you know, if we are feeling pressured sexually, um, and even if they, you know, after like, maybe they pressure you in a certain way, but then mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. And so, but then they yeah. keep doing it over and over again. And you're like, okay, are they really sorry? Do they really want to honor God? What's going on yeah. here? Like, why don't we get account? What's happening? You know, um, that can be a big issue. Um, you know, wanting to keep a very tight circle of who can be involved in the relationship, not really wanting to seek much outside counsel because you know it might end it. If you, I know for uh, me in that relationship, I think we both made an idol out of the other. He mm. wanted something specific from me. I think he wanted marriage and ultimately everything that came with that. And I wanted a relationship. I didn't want to be single. And so I think that that's a very unhealthy place. Like we're not seeking God first and foremost. We're seeking what we want out of this relationship. And that's the driving factor for why we're in the relationship. Um, um, so when I wrote this post, I was thinking of that. And so I just wanted to read a little bit more. I said, settling is never worth it. Don't lower the bar for a guy who's cute and charming, 
but lacks godly character and a genuine love for God. There are tons of cute and charming guys out there. You're not looking for cute and charming alone. You're looking for a guy who genuinely loves God. I said, don't allow yourself to fall for a guy who makes you laugh, but cares only for himself. Don't stay with a guy who says he loves you, but constantly pressures you to compromise. As satisfying as it might feel in the moment to be in a romantic relationship, we've both been there. The inf infatuation won't last forever. I know the waiting is hard. I know the single status can feel like a heavy weight. I know the inner loneliness can feel overwhelming at times, but I also know that settling now won't land you in a better place. And so don't allow the fears of the future of going through a breakup, of being single again, to be the driving force of why you're in mm -hmm. a relationship. Those are terrible reasons to stay in a relationship. It's a terrible reason to stay in a relationship just because you like that feeling of comfort and of friendship and of like, well, it just feels good. I have someone, yeah. something, someone to do with something on Friday night. You know, it's like, no, there's got to be a deeper purpose. There's got to be more to the relationship than just fears of what might be if he's not there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And something that we talk a lot about, because you might be hearing this and thinking, okay, well, no guy's perfect. I'm not perfect. We all make mistakes. And yes, 100% we acknowledge that. But here is the difference. You aren't looking for a guy who is perfect. You're not looking for perfection. You're looking for direction. You're not looking for perfection. You're looking for direction. And what we mean by that is you're not looking for a guy who's 100% like upholding every biblical truth. None of us are. We're yeah. all sinners. We all make mistakes. But is he moving in a direction towards God's word, toward truth, toward biblical um, understanding? Is he consistent in what he says? He says he loves God. Does he actually, do you see that in his actions, in his patterns? Is he moving toward a direction of pulling you forward even morally? Things that the Bible upholds as valuable, is he moving in that direction? And even like reconciliation, does he move towards people like his family that he needs to mm. reconcile with? I know a lot of like people, is there, yeah. yeah, there's like a lot of not reconciliation with a lot of people, but they're like, oh, but I love you so much. And you're like, but your relationships yeah. are a disaster and you're not even trying to have any reconciliation. Yes, yeah, it's like, like moving toward a heart of humility. Yeah. Reconciliation, like all of those things. Forgiveness, like sacrificial love. Is he willing to deny himself for the good of others? Like moving in that direction, falling and stumbling along the way, like all of us. But when that happens, do you see that spirit of humility, that character of like, man, I messed up. Will you forgive me? Or man, I know God wants this for me. I want to pursue it more wholeheartedly. God help me. I need his grace. Like, do you see that direction, that attitude? Or is it the other way where he's constantly pulling you away from God, even if it's subtle, slowly, not moving in a direction toward yeah. the word. And so that is the biggest thing here. That's what we're saying in your relationship. Don't compromise. Don't settle. Don't think of it in terms of perfection, but direction. And if in the hardest, like the deepest parts of your heart, you're like, yeah, he's not, he's not moving in that direction. Yeah. I know it. I see it in all of these different areas of our relationship. Be honest enough to tell someone. And I want to read two quick verses from Proverbs, which warn us yeah. and offer us helpful exhortation and guidance um, in life in general. But this, this is so applicable for a romantic relationships. Proverbs 12, 15 says the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Okay. So this could be for the guy you're dating. Is he a fool? Does he listen to advice? Does he pursue advice? And then you as a woman, let's make it personal. The way of a fool is right in her own eyes, but a wise woman yeah. listens to advice. Are you inviting counsel in? Not just waiting for someone to say like, oh, we see red flags. We see problems. Are you the one saying, I want your counsel? Yeah. Godly couple, meet with us. Pray for us. Offer us accountability. Are you and this guy, are y'all pursuing that? Totally. Or are you isolating yourselves independently on an island, just hoping everything's going to work out? That is not a good biblical plan. Proverbs eleven fourteen also warns against that. It says, where there is no guidance, a people falls. But in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. Do not isolate yourself. Yeah. Do not try to figure this out on your own. The Bible talks about bearing one another's burdens. That includes navigating the path to marriage. It is it's complicated and hard and confusing and our emotions can be tricky. So don't do it alone. Bring in guidance, bring in biblical counsel, not just any counsel, yeah. godly counsel. And the Bible says, when you do that, there is safety. It is actually for your own yeah. good. Yeah. You know, we took a deep dive on this entire topic in our podcast, The Girl yeah. Defined Show. We'll link it below or just go to any like Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen and look up The Girl Defined Show and you'll see our most recent episode on being single, on settling, all of that stuff. And you can listen to that. Yeah. Um, and we break down 10 red flags, yeah. which we also talk about in Love Defined. In Love Defined. So that's a great place yeah. to go to take a deep dive. And then Love Defined, embracing God's vision for lasting love and satisfying relationships. I mean, this is the book for yes. you. If you are single or dating, if you're even if you're engaged like 
I yes. strongly recommend that you read Love to Find because this takes you from like A to Z, um, helping you understand what like a relate why God designed relationships, why God designed marriage, um, red sexual flags to look intimacy, for you. Yeah, sexual intimacy, how to thrive as a single. I um, don't know if he's the one. <laughs> all of the things that you want to know about dating and relationships, and maybe if you should say yes, um, all come in this book. So Love to Find, grab mm-hmm. it wherever books are sold or at girldefined.com. We would love to hear from you in the comments below. We would love to know are there red flags that we didn't mention that you think are really yeah. important and if you have gone through a breakup just what encouragement you would offer to the, the sisterhood on how they can trust mm-hmm. the Lord um, and how going through a breakup is better than settling in the long run so help yeah. encourage the sisterhood um, you know if you're on Instagram or if you are on YouTube or Facebook like let's continue the conversation let's encourage one another and we need to give them the link to 136 oh. questions so this 136 questions guys we've mentioned forgot. it a lot in the past this will help you if you are yeah. in a relationship and you're not sure if those red flags are like, are they really happening? This 136 questions, it's broken up into different yeah. categories of life, spiritual, you know, sexuality, work, future plans, goals, all of those things to help you and the guy you're dating dig into what do we really think about all of this theology? Like it helps you understand where you're each coming from, what you actually believe. It gives you track a track to run yeah. on and it's a free downloadable. You can get it at girldefined.com slash questions. Take advantage of this, guys. We love you so much, and we will see y'all next time.